Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to our latest lecture session. So in the previous session we looked at the uh, relevant theoretical basis for looking at calculating the equivalence point right when you are titrating a, a weak base with a strong acid and we knew that the pH of the equivalence point would depend upon the pKb of your particular uh, weak acid and also uh, to a little extent not to a great extent though on your uh, total base present in your system. So in today's session we are going to primarily look at applications of Vimentech and then if uh, given the time or time constraints looking at the time constraints we are going to move on to uh, buffering I guess. So let us uh, switch over to uh, Vimentech here. So uh, now we are going to look at how to uh, you know uh, look at the applications of titrations in our particular system here. So we will look at two examples one when we have the H2SCO3 present in our system. So let us choose the relevant components for that so I am going to say CO3 total and that let us go with again the same case as last time let us say 0 0.001 right ok or 0 0.01 for now 0 0.01 and I am going to add that to the list and then the other component obviously is going to be H plus and if CO3 2 minus is 0 0.01 our H plus needs to be or H total needs to be 0 0.02 right. So I am going to add that to the list and obviously why is that because H2CO3 is our initial uh, what do we say uh, uh, our source or uh, recipe right. So let us just look at why I guess right. So I am saying that I am adding H2CO3 to the system right. So and if I am choosing H total and CO3 total what is the component balance going to be equal to it is going to be equal to 2 times H2CO3 concentration added initially and CO3 total is going to be equal to 1 times the H2CO3 added initially right and again obviously if I am choosing NaHCO3 right as my recipe species or the concentration or the compounds that I am adding initially what would H total be then it is now going to be equal to 1 times NaHCO3 naught right and CO3 total that is going to be equal to 1 times NaH CO3 naught. Again for this particular Vimentech example I am looking at this particular scenario right when H2CO3 concentration is equal to 0 0.01 molar right. So again let us go back to Vimentech here and let us look at the uh, view edit list. So obviously CO3 2 minus is 0 0.01 molar so uh, there will be a minor error because these are molar units and not molar and H plus is 0 0.02. So back to uh, main menu obviously it is a closed system so no gas is present in that particular case and now we have a particular tab here that says multi problem or sweep. So and when you come to this particular uh, uh, page you see that you have sweep, titration, simulate evaporation or concentration or multi problem generator. So the two aspects we are going to look at for now or uh, for this session are going to be titration and sweep. So let us look at titration right. So let us go to the titration manager. So it is going to ask you for the arbitrary units of the uh, volume that you are titrating. So arbitrary units right so let us I will just uh, for the sake of ease I am going to choose uh, 100 let us say right and the volume of the titrant let us say I am going to choose uh, volume of titrant is going to be per step. So I am going to choose it is 1 right so if it is 100 ml total solution in your particular conical flask so I am going to add 1 ml each time right or each with each step. So that is part the particular case and then I am going to say it is only going to start with step 2 because I want to see what the system is before addition of this particular component. So let us say I am going to change the concentration of what now let us say I am going to add a base because it is H2CO3 I am going to see what is going to happen if I am adding a base. So I am looking for H plus here ok it is H plus here because it is base I am going to say it is negative right and let us see how we plug that in negative pardon me negative point uh, let us go with 1 negative point 1 right. So what does this mean I am going to add a base or you know H plus at negative point 1 means a base at point 1 concentration to a total volume of 100 uh, units at 1 unit each right. So save and back to multi sweep menu and it is going to ask for the number of steps. Uh, so for now let us say we are going to look at uh, 15 steps let us say or 20 steps so that means a total of 20 ml is going to be added right 
And here you can have uh, choose which particular components or compounds you want to have in your output. So, I am going to have all the concentrations of the carbonate system right and where else HCO3 minus. If you want to you can look at the log concentration or activity and so on, but for now I am only looking at the concentrations of the 3 uh, carbonate system relevant species right. So, again 20 uh, steps and titration manager. So, what does this mean now? So, there are going to be uh, 100 ml let us say I am assuming it is ml, but anyway 100 units of your volume in the flask and I am going to add 1 unit each time and I believe we saved that. So, I am not going to go back to here H plus at minus 0 0.1 concentration right and let us go back to save and back and run Mintech and let us see selected sweep results. So, here again I will come back to this main output menu this is at for your particular sweep 1 right, but you know that we asked the steps to be at uh, 20 iterations I guess right when we added uh, H plus at minus 0.1 uh, concentration. So, you can choose them individually and look at uh, the relevant concentrations right or I can obviously just choose the selected sweep results and I am going to have problem 1 to 20 and how the pH changes here and the relevant concentrations. So, obviously, because I am adding a uh, base because H plus is negative or H total is negative. So, you see an increase in pH with each problem step and obviously, the relevant change in your particular concentrations. So, I guess here the uh, base concentration was less we are going to change that to be a higher concentration and look at what it is going to be, but let us look at what we have here. So, the pH is 4.1 we know that it is much less than the pKa1 of your particular carbonate system which is 6.3. Right. So, what would you expect now? You would expect that most of it would be in H2CO3 and that is what you see here right H2CO3 and next higher concentration would be HCO3 and the least concentration would be CO3 to minus. Again to refresh our uh, memories uh, where is this from? We know that if you look at the speciation let us say. So, this is H2CO3 concentration and this is going to be HCO3 minus concentration and this is going to be CO3 2 minus concentration and we know that the pKa1 value is 6.3 and I think pKa2 is around 10.3 and our current uh, example has our pH at 4. Point, I think 4.1 uh, right. So, as you see at 4.1 most of it or almost all of it is as H2CO3 and very little particular uh, carbonate uh, concentration is going to be in the form of HCO3 minus and there is going to be a negligible or no amount of CO3 2 minus present at pH 4.1. Let us switch back to Vimitech right and that is what we have here 4.1 and highest concentration is of the most protonated form which is H2CO3 and the second highest concentration is HCO3 minus and the least will be CO3 2 minus. And obviously, as you keep increasing the pH you are going to see a slight decrease in your H2CO3 but we have not hit pKa yet that is the reason we have not seen a great change. So, let us go back to uh, our Vimintech I guess right. So, I am going to change the concentration of the particular base that we are adding and go to titration manager and uh, where is this here. So, I am going to change that here by saying the concentration is much higher now. Let us say it is uh, instead of 0.1 I am going to say it is going to be uh, 1 let us say mole per liter and component is going to be H plus let us look for that uh, concentration H plus minus 1 mole per liter of H plus is being added at with each unit step. So, save and next ok I think I uh, did not add uh, save and next earlier that could be the reason why we did not see a change there. So, again let us try to do this save and back multi steps 20 steps titration manager save and back here and I am going to run the mean tech. And again look at the selected sweep results. So, that is the reason I guess because I did not save it earlier we had an erroneous value. So, now we see the jump in pH from 4.1 to 8.2 with just one particular titration step. So, again I am going to move back to the particular input menu and change that again. Uh, so, I am going to delete this I am going to have again 0 0.01 let us say but it is a negative value right minus again what is it of? It is of H plus again save and next and this is what we missed earlier save and back 
and again everything else is going to be the same save and back and run mintech and let us look at the sweep results. So, now we have a, a greater variation now the pH is from 4.1 to 5.7 right. So, again but I want to capture the change with respect to the pKa which is 6.3. So, I am going to again increase the concentration of my particular uh, uh, base here let us see again back to input menu and titration manager. So, instead of 0 0.01 let me take up 10 times I guess right and here the key is minus 0 0.1 yes and again what are we trying to have here we are going to try to have h plus h plus seven next so again what does this mean so with each unit step i am adding uh, or with each titration step i am adding a base of 0 0.1 mole per liter and obviously h total uh, will reflect that in minus 0 0.1 and uh, 100 units of the particular volume of your particular uh, solution in your conical flask right and total number of steps is 20. So, total of 20 ml is being added. So, save and back and hopefully now we should have the relevant results. Right now we have the relevant results. So, we have a change from 4.1 to 10.8 and we should be able to capture all these results here right. So, let us look at the uh, change here. So, 4.1 as we expect everything will be in form of H2CO3. So, 9.9 .9 into 10 power minus 3 what does that mean? It is almost equal to 10 power minus 2. Our initial concentration of the CO3 total was 10 power minus 2 and you see H2CO3 aqueous is itself 9.9 .9 into 10 power minus 3. But as we reach the pKa value around 6.3 right which is at the step titration step number 2 you see that the concentrations of what is it now H2CO3 and HCO3 minus are the same and that is what we know from our background right at pKa 1 the relevant protonate and deprotonate forms are going to be the same in concentration. And let us move on to 10.3 which is the second uh, particular uh, pKa 2. And at that particular case H2CO3 will be non-existent more or less right and that is what you see here and more or less everything will be in the form of CO3 2 minus and HCO3 minus and that is what you see here yes at the pKa 2 it is 4.9 in 10 power minus 3 and 3.6 on in 10 power minus 3. Let us look at the figure and see what this means. So, at 4.1 everything is in the form of H2CO3 and at 6.3 we see that it is equal amounts of H2CO3 and HCO3 minus and at around 10.3 it is going to be equal amounts of HCO3 minus and CO3 2 minus right and that is what we just looked at. But one issue with what we just did is that you know we considered that the total uh, volume units to be 100 and at the end of our 20th step we added 20 uh, units now. For example, to make it easier let us assume that we have 100 ml initially and I am adding 1 ml at each titration step. At the end of my titration let us say I am now have a total volume of 120 ml right. So, the issue with setting up the titration step in such a way is that you know your particular uh, uh, total concentrations or concentrations are going to change because of considerable addition of your uh, volume of your titrant right. So, where we had 100 ml we now have 120 ml. So, let us look at the way to uh, get out of this particular uh, scenario. So, main output menu I am going to say switch come back to here back to input menu. So, as again how do we do that? So, go to titration manager. So, we are going to say that you know uh, we just want to look at the change with the change in pH here right there is another way but with respect to titration 2 what can you do? You can say that the uh, concentration of your particular uh, what is it now uh, titrant is very high or you can show that or you know, can choose that the initial volume of your particular uh, you know solution is very high. So, instead of 100 I can have 10,000 there you know these are all arbitrary units right. I can have 10,000 or so units there and I can have a very high concentration of my particular uh, base. Let us see what I am uh, talking about. So, instead of 100 I am going to let us say go up with uh, 10,000 okay. And obviously, because I am increasing that I also need to increase the concentration of my particular acid. So, I am going to say it is going to be equal to Mm, minus 1 let us say and it is again going to be H plus right. So, again uh, what does this mean now I am adding acid at high concentrations at each step. So, but because the total concentration or not concentration pardon me the volume is 10,000 units and I am only adding 20 uh, times of 1 unit 
10,000 and 20 does not make much difference compared to 10,000, right. So, this is a better way when you are trying to look at or capture the uh, uh, change with respect to pH when you are using the titration tab, right. Uh, why is that again? Otherwise, you are going to see to it that the concentrations of your particular uh, components or species are going to change if your titrant volume is going to be equal to what you are titrating against. So, that is one particular way. So, we will not go through that again uh, for lack of time. Uh, but there is another aspect I would like to demonstrate here that is that we have sweep. So, this is a bit more uh, complex, but for uh, titrations we can use that. So, what does sweep, what is sweep about? It means one parameter is varied, right? Sweep is when one parameter is varied. So, we are, have EH and the potential and so on which we are not going to look at or you can you can change the total concentration of any component. So, what is the additional functionality that you have here with respect to constraint to uh, titration let us say, right? Uh, you know you have one parameter that is varied, but when titration let us say earlier we had only H plus, but if I wanted to I can also have calcium magnesium or any such uh, parameters there or components mentioned in the titration tab. But here it is much more easier if I am just looking at the change with respect to pH, right. But again with respect to titration it is always better if it is a complex system to look at the titration relevant uh, chart as in you know you go to titration here, right, go to titration manager. So, earlier it was only H plus so that was fine, but let us say it had calcium, you know, uh, where is calcium here, C A, right, then I can only do so from this particular uh, tab here. You know, if I am titrating your particular my solution with uh, against calcium, right? I have some particular solution here which I want to form a complex or precipitate, and I am titrating titrating it with calcium. Let's say so. Obviously, I can't use the uh, sweep menu. I only need to use the titration menu. Yes. So, but obviously, if I am just looking at the change in pH, I can go to the sweep menu which we are going to use and further analyze our system. So, I am going to say the pH is going to change. And uh, let's say the start value. I am going to say it's going to. I am going to look at the change from pH zero pH 0 and let us say the increment between values let us say I will go with uh, 0 0.5 or uh, 0 0.25 let us say 0 0.25 and if I want to go to 14 right and if it is uh, 14 times uh, 2 28 right 56 and I will go with 54 then 54. So, the start value and the increment between values. So, obviously, you need to be able to approximate. So, I am trying to go to 14, hopefully 54 should uh, satisfy my particular uh, case here, right. So, pH starts from 0, increment between each uh, particular step is 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and so on that is what this means and how many iterations 54 I guess. And same case as earlier pH CO3 2 minus and so on this is what I want to look at. So, save and back let me just confirm my components so, they are still 0 0.01 and 0 0.02 of my uh, H plus right H 2 C O 3 and now we are going to run Mintech. Again you can look at the number of iterations up to 54 here right and the initial pH that I wanted was pH 0. Let us see what the final pH was if my calculations were right okay 13.25. So, I should have had 3 more iterations. So, anyway we will look at the selected sweep results here. So, selected sweep results and now with pH I can clearly see how the concentrations is, cha is changing. So, at pH 0 obviously everything it will be in the form of H2CO3 and nothing else of CO3 2 minus or HCO3 minus and that is what you see. So, again uh, too much data right in a tabular form you can never uh, understand what is happening. So, obviously I want to uh, be able to visualize it in a better manner. So, I am going to uh, uh, you know uh, come up with a graph here. So, how do I do that here? I have the option for print to Excel okay and thus automatically transports the relevant data to Excel right and let it uh, come through. So, here we have up to pH 13.25 starting from pH 0. So, let us try to uh, uh, get the relevant uh, graphs here right. So, I am going to look at a scatter plot for now right and I am going to say select data and the chart range is going to be equal to this particular set here yes and I am going to have uh, let us see if okay, CO3 2 minus H2 CO3 and so on. So, looks like I am on the right track and so this is what I have in here right. And so, what do we observe here? So, please uh, keep in mind that this is just a scatter plot right. Uh, the actual data points were calculated here or plotted here. So, the x axis is the pH 0 to 13.25 or 0 to 14 here and y axis is the concentration. 
So, obviously, if you remember the initial concentration of H2CO3 that we put in was 0 0.01 molar. So, the obviously, the maximum concentration of any of the species can only be 0 0.01. And now, we see with our titration how is the how is the speciation changing. Everything is in the form of H2CO3, H2CO3 is the red here, right H2CO3. But as we reach the pKa value around 6.3 I guess, right, we see that there is a drastic drop in H2CO3 concentration and drastic increase in HCO3 minus concentration, right. And at pKa1 which is 6.3 or thereabouts, we see that H2CO3 and HCO3 minus concentrations are equal. And as we keep increasing the pH, so if I keep moving further down at pH 8, I see that almost everything is in the form of only HCO3 minus, right. And uh, there is no, no or little to no concentration of CO3 2 minus and H2CO3. And as I keep increasing the pH, what is happening now? HCO3 is decreasing while now CO3 2 minus is increasing, right. And at pKa2, which we know is 10.3 for the carbonate system, we see that we end up with this particular graph or uh, you know scenario wherein CO3 2 minus and HCO3 minus concentrations are now equal here. And as I keep increasing the pH or titrating it further such that the pH increases. What do I see here? We see that CO3 2 minus now starts predominating and there is little to no uh, HCO3 minus present beyond pH 12 I guess, right. So, what does this uh, tell you now? So, here if I am trying to titrate and look at the species of the various uh, what do we say uh, equilibrium carbonate uh, species, what do I get? I know that there are two equivalence points. So, what does that mean now? Because H2CO3 can donate let us say uh, two particular uh, protons, right. So, here in this particular system I have two equivalence points and when where are they going to be obviously at around uh, uh, the pKa values, right uh, depending obviously on the total uh, CO3 total present too. Again you can calculate the equivalence point depending upon uh, you know the relevant formula we calculated in the last session, right. Again uh, if it is again a uh, diprotic acid it will have two particular uh, equivalence points, monoprotic as in let us say acetic acid, it will have one particular uh, equivalence point, right. So, this is something that we uh, demonstrate now. So, now we are going to move on to buffers, right. So, uh, what is the point of uh, having acids and bases now let us say, you know, or where would you also use them practically I guess, there are many applications. But let us say I have a particular experiment and I want to maintain the pH at a particular value. Obviously, I cannot maintain it exactly let us say if I am looking for uh, 6.5, I cannot always see to it that it only changes uh, stays at 6.5, but let us say you know I am ok with you know it being plus or minus 0.2 change. So, let us see what I am uh, referring to here I guess, right. Again uh, just a particular uh, schematic I guess here with respect to our uh, titration. So, the pH as the base is added, right, you have a change from base here at the pKa and so on, conjugate acid is exhausted. So, this is more or less a description or a you know a graph that is relevant to what we just discussed. So, I am going to uh, not skip this in greater detail. So, obviously, at the pKa value the relevant conjugate acid and base are going to be at the uh, same concentration. Again as you add the acid the pH is going to decrease and the reverse phenomena is going to be uh, what do we say uh, visible I guess, right. So, again I am going to move on. Uh, so, we are going to uh, discuss uh, buffers and we know that in the natural systems, right we have relevant applications and also in the engineered systems. So, natural systems we typically look at alkinity and we will discuss this particular important aspect later on. Uh, but for now let us say we are going to consider a particular scenario uh, where we have a particular pH or I want to maintain the pH of a system at pH uh, 6.5 and let us say the system can produce some acid let us say or during the course of the experiment acid can be produced and you know it can bring down the pH, but I do not want my pH to go beyond let us say 6.5 plus or minus 0 0.5, right. I am ok with the pH staying between 6 and 7, but no further though. So, what do I do, right, you know or uh, we are going to try to uh, correlate this with what happens in the natural systems too, but let us try to understand this. So, an acid can be produced in my experiment or a base can be produced and it can affect the pH, but let us say I only want the pH to be at a particular value because let us say I am concerned with the kinetic uh, or effects on kinetics let us say, right. So, how do I go about it? So, I am going to add a buffer and what is this buffer I, or what is the role of this buffer? What is the object to here? I do not want the pH to change drastically, right. So, I, even if there is any acid or base produced, the key here is that any acid or base is produced, the buffer should be able to limit the change in pH, right. 
So what does that mean now? So it means that whenever we add or you know there is a change in H total, right? H total means it can uh, it includes the addition of either an acid or a base, right? So whenever there is a change in H total, the buffer will see to it that the change in pH is relatively minimal, right? That is what my function or you know that is what I expect from my buffer. Let us see uh, what it is about I guess. So here I have a graph I believe, okay? So here I have a graph and he, I have pH on the y axis and let us say I am adding acid as I go from uh, left to right and I am adding a base as I am going from right to left. So obviously as I am adding an acid uh, what is happening to the pH here? So anyway, so this is the system here. So I assume that this is the case when uh, the pH when I am adding the acid and this is the case when I am adding the base, uh, uh, you know hypothetical example here, right? So let us say when I ask students to choose you know in which regions let us say is the particular uh, system well buffered right. So please take some uh, seconds or you know few uh, minutes I guess not minutes anyway uh, seconds I guess to identify those regions in this particular system when the system is well buffered. Again keep in mind the key is that the pH needs to change less with when the acid or base is added right. So identify those regions when the pH or dPH with the addition of H plus is going to be less. So people though you know uh, typically I guess because they are drawn to uh, you know uh, the intersection here people identify this particular region as saying that it is well buffered. But let us say you know I guess uh, we mentioned this is with change in base. So here let us say let us look at this zone let me erase that and come back to the ideal case. So here if I am saying that as concentration of base is added this is the change and let us say the hypothetical example was this is the change in pH right and if I am erroneous anyway that can be taken into account. So anyway with base added let us say there is not a huge lot of uh, change in uh, pH right. So I am adding the base so the pH concentration is increasing here um, as I am increasing the concentration of base the pH is increasing here right. So and here let us say in this particular region okay uh, there is less change in pH right when considerable base is added okay that is fine uh, you might think that it is well buffered. But if I look at the reverse case when the acid is added and the pH is decreasing right and what is happening here though in the same region let us say for the same case of the acid being added though what is happening here. We see that in this particular region for even a small concentration of the acid added the change in pH is considerable right. So what does this mean now this that it means that in this region the system is not well buffered right. So let us try to highlight those particular uh, aspects I guess. So the, uh, these regions as in you know if I look at these regions and this region. So even with uh, addition of acid or base the change in pH is relatively minimal in these particular regions yes. So again uh, keep in mind that uh, we are talking about change in uh, pH in uh, due to addition of either the acid or the base and not just to uh, due to either just acid or base though right. Uh, so again it needs to be able to resist the change in pH in both directions and not just in one direction that is the crux of the matter. So in the next session we are going to try to develop an equation for uh, calculating this buffer intensity and then maybe looking at a few applications on uh, vmintech okay and i guess with that i'll end this session uh, thank you